Hello and welcome to the 74th most informative video on photography on the internet. Today we're going to talk about Russian lenses. Everybody needs a website. We have a website. We've got one hosted here on Squarespace. Our store is here because their e-commerce solutions are really nice. They integrate with ShipStation, uh, integrate with Stripe. The really nice thing about Squarespace is that it puts your content forward. There's lots of different templates. If you want to modify the templates, you have full get access. You can modify the CSS and do pretty much anything you like. You get their enterprise grade hosting, plus you get 24 seven support with them. Here's our new layout on our store. It was really easy to set this up and we just use tags and categories. Start your free trial right now at squarespace.com and if you use coupon code CRIT, you're gonna save 10%. You're welcome. Head over there, feel free to post your websites on the forum so we can all check them out. So during World War something, I'm making this up, maybe I'm not, I don't know. The Russians went into Germany and they saw the Leica factory and the Zeiss factory and they were like, look at all these precision tools and look at all this equipment and they took the tooling and then they went back and they started making copy lenses, copy cameras, copy gear, whatever. And now you can find some of this stuff online for sale. The prices are really low. So here's why you should consider a Russian lens. If you're on an extreme budget but want something that's really high quality and gives you a, a nice look, a professional look. Um, if you're a filmmaker who wants to add a couple really nice prime lenses to their repertoire and their lens bag. First off, you're gonna need to convert these to a more modern lens mount. Unless you wanna use them on old school cameras, you can go ahead and do that. We'll cover that in another video, talking about all the cool old school cameras you can you know, buy and use these with. But right now we're gonna talk about using these on digital cameras. Most of you guys out there are either gonna have a micro four thirds camera or you're gonna have, you know, a, a Nikon or a Canon. Uh, and then there's a few other people out there who have Pentax or something else. You can go online and you can find converters for these old lenses to almost any of the new mounts. It's pretty easy. You just go over to Amazon and you type, oh, this is an old Leica M39 screw mount. So you type M39 screw mount to MFT for micro or four thirds if you're using one of those cameras or to EF mount if you're using a Canon camera. Now, one thing to remember is these were all designed for 35 millimeter film. 35 millimeter film is sort of the way most people in the world uh, think when they look at the, the, the you know, the, the focal length of the lens, like a 50 millimeter lens, you think of it, oh, 50 millimeters like this. Well, today we have some cameras out there in the market that are pretty expensive uh, and they do have full frame, meaning their, you know, their sensor is the same size as 35 millimeter film. Most of the digital cameras have smaller sensors. Now, what happens when you take a lens designed for, you know, 35 millimeter film and you put it in front of a smaller sensor? Well, it's going to magnify by a factor. So micro four thirds, most of those sensors are gonna give you a two times magnification factor. So taking a 50 millimeter lens and putting it on your micro four thirds, you know, Panasonic GH4, your Olympus pen camera, all of a sudden that's gonna be a hundred millimeter lens. Now this can be great if you need a zoom lens, but it's gonna be kind of hard to find a wide angle lens if you're looking for something with a massive crop factor like two. If you have, you know, a full frame camera like a Canon 5D or 60 or something like that, uh, one of the new Nikons or something. These are gonna be great for those. Having said that, and having taken that into consideration, let's look at some lenses, and then you can think about your camera in your head and think about what the actual focal length is gonna be. I'm gonna start wide, and uh, you know, there's not a lot of op options when it comes to uh, wide angle lenses. In fact, there's not even any of these available online, but if you wanted something wide that has a decent f-stop, meaning it you know, gives you a nice bokeh, opens up, lets a lot of light in, uh, you're gonna have to look for the RSAT 20 millimeter uh, lens. It's a uh, f2.8 as far as the f-stop goes uh, lens. And uh, this one is going to be like 40 millimeters on like a Panasonic GH4 and f2.8 is pretty good. Now the reason you would buy this over, you know, say like a, a newer lens, uh, you know, like a Sam Yang or a Rokinon or something like that, one of the less expensive manual lenses, you would buy this just for the price. But if you had a little bit more money, you're gonna wanna just go ahead and get a nice wide angle lens for your camera. All right, moving on up. If you wanted to look for like a 30, 35, 37 millimeter, uh, the Mir 1B, or is that the Mir 1 or the Mir 1B, you'll see them online. This is an F2.8 37 millimeter lens. Now that's still gonna make your, you know, it's still gonna make, I guess a pretty long lens, even on, you know, a, a, a Panasonic GH4 or something. But if you have like a Canon 5D or a full frame, you know, camera like a Sony A7S or something like that, this is a really, a uh, decent 2.8 lens. Also the, the Mir 10A is a 28 millimeter lens, but it only opens up to f 3.5. It's gonna be good for a full frame camera, but I would not recommend this lens for a crop. All right, <clears throat> moving on up to uh, the Jupiter 12. It's another nice um, focal range, 35 millimeter, and it's f 2.8. 
Uh, these are like 49 bucks, and if you want like a 35 millimeter focal length lens, this is one hell of a lens. All right, let's move on to one of my favorite lenses, and this is the Jupiter 8. Now, I'm not forget if these are contacts or um, Leica or, or Zeiss clones, but these are solid lenses, and you can get them in a couple different mounts. You can get them in the contacts mount or the M39 mount. I generally like the M39 mount because it's easier to work with on modern cameras. It's not so deep, uh, but this one produces uh, pretty nice pictures. The bokeh is a little harsh for some people, but if you are okay with that look, um, it's decently sharp when you're all the way wide open, you know, at f2, because it's a nice f2 lens. But if you stop it down a little bit, it's nice and sharp. And you can see here's the uh, Jupiter 8 lens with the contacts mount, which is a little deeper. Uh, some sensors have problems with this. You're gonna have to get a fat uh, converter for this sort of thing. I generally stay away from the contacts mount for modern stuff. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, if you have a bunch of contacts lenses, go ahead and get them out, but uh, just check out your camera and make sure that there's no, it's not gonna touch the sensor or anything like that. Don't want that. All right, now the lens that we're gonna be using mostly for this video is the um, just a standard, I guess, sort of generic lens. You can get it for like 30 bucks on eBay. They come with a lot of these Russian cameras you buy. It's the Indostar 61. And this is a uh, 55 millimeter. Some of them are somewhere in the range 52 to 55, depending on the version you get. Uh, it's f2.8, so it doesn't open up as much as the Jupiter 8, but the bokeh is nice on this one. It's not quite as harsh. It may not be quite as nice of a lens overall. If I had to pick one or the other, I'd probably go for the Jupiter 8. Uh, but this one is just, you know, a decent lens you can take around town. Um, it's good for, you know, street photography, sniping. Uh, it's really, you know, good for video work. And it's got decent contrast, but it's not the best. Let's uh, talk about some specialty lenses like the uh, Helios 44-2. Now this is a 58 millimeter lens. It's gonna be a really long lens on a, you know, a 2X or a, you know, 1.3X crop sensor. But this lens produces very interesting bokeh. It's F2, so it opens way up, lets a lot of light in. And uh, the bokeh on this one is a bit strange. It's got like a circular bokeh pattern in the background. Uh, some lenses do this and it kind of draws the attention to the center of the frame. I recommend this for a lot of filmmakers out there who want to maybe have a couple of very interesting shots that just, you know, when the background's blown out and it just kind of swirls around the subject in the middle. Um, other than that, it's a great portrait lens, but if you don't want the distortion in the background, you're gonna have to go for like the Indostar or the Jupiter 8. All right, lastly, there is a beautiful lens that is a Zeiss clone. And it's one of the best lenses you can get from Russia, but it is a bit pricier than the other ones typically. The Jupiter 9. It's an 85 millimeter F2 lens. Uh, this is like the perfect portrait lens on a standard, you know, camera. On a crop camera, this is a really long lens. But the amount of bokeh you're gonna get out of this is beautiful. So those are my picks for my favorite Russian lenses. Uh, let me know if you guys are gonna be using any of these and let me know like how you're gonna be using it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a long lens on a, on a crop sensor, that's, that's totally fine, but uh, for a lot of you know filmmakers, especially out there, this is something you can grab and throw in your bag and just have one extra interesting lens to use for a couple shots uh, in your film or in your whatever you're making. Uh, for photographers and stuff, these things are great. I mean, they're, they're similar technology you know, back then to what we have today, uh, maybe some different coatings and that sort of thing, but if you want to save a ton of money and get a lens that's way better than your stupid kit lens, then take a look at uh, what's coming out of Russia, or what used to come out of USSR, I should say. All right, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask them over on our forum. I've linked all these products that we've talked about, including some of my favorite adapters on Amazon and eBay and that sort of thing. So go ahead and check out all those links over there. Be sure to get a shirt, with the seventh best shirts in the universe. That's pretty big. I don't think the other seven or six are still making shirts anymore, so we're the best now. All right, bye.